All right, everyone, I can name a potential Democratic candidate in 2020 that won't be the nominee because he's he's put his foot in his mouth, and I don't know exactly what would possess him to do that unless he's not planning to run anyway, and he's doing what I expected, what I said, I think literally yesterday I expect him to do, which is open up his purse strings, make a couple speeches and campaign for others, basically be the moneyed side of the Democratic Party, and that's Michael Bloomberg. Um, he has come out now and strongly opposed pot legalization, said, well, we're making another illicit substance illegal, I mean legal, and that's going to cause lives to be shattered. Marijuana is the devil's weed. Uh, listening to Bloomberg, he was a police statist, and that's really why. He likes the police state. He wants to disarm everyone, uh, continue the drug war. He wants people in prison because he makes money probably on that. Uh, Michael Bloomberg, you know, I, probably. <laughs> he's probably got buddies that at least do. Like, these people are all in cahoots. Uh, he's a police statist, but it's very, very funny to see someone who's like a far-left Democrat, like anti-gun, more taxes, except for Bloomberg's class of people. Well, raise taxes on the working rich, but I'm going to keep using my tax shelter, says Michael. Uh, it's very funny come out and say marijuana is the devil's weed. I mean, it sounds like something you'd hear from maybe the Republicans 10 years ago. Meanwhile, we've got a Republican president who doesn't give a fuck, appears to have possibly fired the last idiot that was in charge of, of oh, what was, it, what was uh, Sessions in charge? I can't even remember. Uh, Department of Justice, Attorney General, what the fuck ever. Uh, fuck it, even not memorable because of an idiot. Uh, basically cans him and he was pro uh, pro-drug war, basically, well, marijuana, medical marijuana is still going to be illegal on the national stage. It's a horrible thing. People are going to get addicted. And then his own staff were laughing at him for it. They were like literally cracking jokes about the fact that the person in charge of U.S. drug policy doesn't know anything about marijuana. Uh, this has been a continuous problem at the DEA. It's a continuous problem at the FDA. Um, you have a lot of legalism, a lot, a lot of superstition, really. It's very, very funny when the left rambles about how superstitious the right is when now they've got someone who, who sounds like he's living in the 1920s and watching Reefer Madness uh, and they want him to be a presidential candidate like they've they've openly talked about they want Bloomberg in the race or at the very least please Michael give us some money <laughs> that's really what it's about um, if Trump were to come out and propose this I'd, I'd ream him too of course he's not he's in favor of medical pot and he says well it's a state's issue on legalization fuck it I don't care that's probably the right uh, tone to strike. Meanwhile, you look at the Democratic field, it's night and day. Uh, several of them, I think um, I think Kamala Harris and Gillibrand are in favor of full federal legalization. Isn't Gabbard, like, just wants to do what Trump's doing, basically, I think. Uh, and then Julian Castro, I'm not sure about his position, and nor do I really care. Uh, marijuana has been legalized in enough states now, and I think New York and New Jersey are both considering it now, too, along with several others. It's sort of the tipping point. It's sort of like with gay marriage. You had a, f a few states at first, you know, say, well, okay, we're going to make gay marriage legal. Then you get on the federal level, the federal government decides not to step in, make it reciprocal, like states have to acknowledge the marriages in other states. More states legalize, and eventually then you have the court decision. Once you've already got a tidal wave of legalization, we're approaching that point now with marijuana. My hope is that the, the Denver, Colorado uh, proposal for legalizing psilocybin takes hold because then we can expand the debate on the drug war past just marijuana. My biggest problem with the like legalize it crowd has been they don't want to legalize other things. They're like, oh, yeah, pot's like a gift from God, man. I smoke it every goddamn day. I smoke it out of a bong. I fucking toke it in this pipe. Uh, you know, I vape it and, and, and I've got blunts, you know, stashed all around my house. But psilocybin is scary. I don't want to legalize that. And it's sort of like looking at maybe the yuppies talking about like Cody or something like that. Mm. Oh man, it's so fucking funny. Here's my proposal. Americans should be able to put drugs in their bodies if they want. Hell, they can already drink themselves to death. They can pickle their liver. They can uh, destroy their lungs with cigarettes. They can drink enough caffeine till their heart explodes. Um, what's the difference? Uh, <laughs> alcohol and tobacco are far more addictive than most of these other substances, unless you're talking about the hard substances. And here's the thing. You can get into a program for, for quitting smoking. It's not always universally successful, but you can. You can get the patch. You can get uh, your fucking the nic nicotine gum. You can get counseling of various sorts. You can go to an aboga ritual in, in some part of the world. Uh, you can go. You can go take DMT down in South America or something. And say, "Wow, look at look at all the stars. They're so beautiful. I can never smoke again." Uh, alcohol. You can get into Alcoholics Anonymous or a dozen other, you know, potentially better programs for them. I think the, I think the Scientologists run that, don't they? Like they're the ones that developed it, or some weird shit like that, or was that Narconon or one of these groups? I don't even know. Uh, but regardless, those are technically hard substances. They are, you know, highly addictive. 
They don't really have medical benefits. Alcohol is a pain reliever in some degree, but you know it's not necessarily great for you. I drink. Uh, it's not great for me. I admit that and understand that fact. Uh, but why should we treat like heroin or crack or something any differently? Like we've looked at it the wrong way. We look at people who are on those substances as degenerated. Why don't we don't look at people who get addicted to alcohol that way as degenerated unless they're engaged in other criminal behavior? Most of the criminal behavior associated with like heroin addictions, it's going to be property crime. It's going to be, hey, I need a fix. I'm going to go steal someone's stereo and I'll have my fix. It's basically what it boils down to. Uh, you don't hear a lot. There's not a whole lot of literature to suggest that people, they get strung out on hard drugs and they go on a rampage and kill people. No, usually they're going to be to too doped up to do that. I think the exception might be like maybe methamphetamine or something. Uh, meth is a hell of a drug, as they say. Um, you know, here's what I think. Michael Bloomberg's living the fucking medieval era when it comes to marijuana. That puts him apart from even a lot of the new crop of Republicans. Like the Rand Pauls of the party are like, yes, yeah, smoke weed every day. Rand Paul's like, yeah, I do like, what is it, eye surgery or something? Yeah, you should smoke weed for your glaucoma symptoms. It'll be funny. Uh, it is really funny. I, I can imagine he's probably tried weed. Uh, there's that Aqua Buddha story about him from college that I don't think is fully true, but it's still pretty funny where I guess he got so high with his roommate that they, like, fake abducted a girl and put her in the river and forced her to worship Aqua Buddha or something. <laughs> and it's just, I, I hope that it's true, but there's no reason to suggest that it is. It appears to have been a smear campaign when he first ran for the Senate. And then Michael Bloomberg's come out saying, well, we shouldn't legalize any illicit substance. Keep the drug war going, boys. You can't win the drug war. Especially not now that, what is it, 10 or 11 states have legalized? Yeah, good fucking luck. They're already growing their own pot crops. Now, the reason is Michael Bloomberg probably makes money from uh, Mexican drug cartels, too, or from uh, you know, some groups in, in Belize or Costa Rica or something that are growing their own pot or their own uh, other drugs. He's worried that his heroin supply will dry up uh, and will start getting it domestically instead of over in Afghanistan or something. It's really, really sad to see someone who's supposedly on the left. The, the left is totally turning into yesteryear's right. They're pro-war now. They're, they're pro-conspiracy theory with regards to Venezuela. That's a funny one. Um, they're pro-drug war. They're, they hate self-defense. They call it fascism if you believe in free speech. Uh, they want to you know, spy on everyone. I mean, they like corporate fascism. What a bunch of losers. They look like Bush Republicans back in the mid-2000s to me. That's about all. Peace out.